Hi, Dee Dee here. All right, you got that welding interview. So exciting. Congratulations. All right, so now you're kind of freaking out about what you need to wear and what you need to bring. So this is going to be a two part video. The first video is going to describe the tools and the second video is going to describe the clothes because it's going to be a lot of information at once. I don't want to overwhelm you because you're already excited. You already got that high. So look in the description box. I'm going to write down what I would bring personally through, through the 10 years of my experience and the multiple interviews that I have been to and multiple jobs that I have got. So look for the description and stay tuned. Hello everyone. This is Dee Dee. This is the first video for the weld interview and today I'm going to be talking about the tools. I'm going to have to put a disclaimer out there because all the product I'm going to be showing you today I'm not being sponsored by. These are the products I've been using the past 10 years. These are the products I've been using for job interviews, going on sites. I've been using these for years and I absolutely love them. For the people that are going to construction sites you probably won't be able to use these products that I'm suggesting unless they have an air compressor on site. That's a maybe, because <laughs> if not, you're probably going to have to get yourself some battery operated tools, which the PPEs I'm going to be showing you today are most likely you're going to need on site for the construction sites. So if it has an air compressor, you can use the tools on suggesting if not I'll suggest towards the end battery operated tools that work just fine that get you through the job until you can pretty much afford other tools so let's get started all right I want to talk about safety glasses make sure you get the certified ones don't just go to the Dollar Tree and just go to the Harbor Freight you need the proper ocean regulated let me get this right a N S I next you're gonna need some earplugs to bring your own don't depend on the company next is this is what I suggest for to keeping your skin complexion looking beautiful at all times because when you're welding it gives off an ultraviolet light it's the same as the Sun so all I suggest is to wear some sunblock probably about 50 plus and you'll be just fine because it'll protect your ears, it'll protect your neck, making yourself look beautiful still. So, I like to bring a toolbox, but you can also bring a tool book bag where you can pile everything in. It all is your whatever preference you have. This is what I use. I use this big old toolbox here that holds all of the tools that I absolutely love. So, let's get started. You're going to need a flashlight, ladies. The flashlight is going to be for looking at the cracks, looking at the underfill, looking at the um, porosity, looking at the BBs. This will help you in that small booth that has no light. So, bring yourself a flashlight. Um, a tape measure is just strictly going to be if you have to lay out your own plates to do a 3G, 4G to make sure you have that exact um, root pass. So that's what a good tape measure is for. I'm not suggesting to bring your big fancy one, just a little generic one, nothing too fancy. Make sure it's inches and millimeters and centimeters because they might throw you a little wrench on that one. You always want to be prepared. Uh, the air tools I like to bring is a polisher. A polisher is to make sure my welds come out nice and clean and beautiful, get all those little BBs off. And I have an extra pigtails, but you can also bring a wrench to take off this if the um, air compressor or the air fitting doesn't fit. So you can always ask, hey, can I get a new fitting because my tools don't work here. So usually they comply and go, yeah, for sure. So I like to bring a cutting wheel. Uh, this is an Ingersoll. Pretty much all of my tools are Ingersoll or Mako. Um, the cutting wheel will be for if you want to make yourself a little valley 
when you're doing a vertical up and you just need that little bit of a ledge so you can put your next pass on. Also the same thing for a horizontal. So this will come in handy, believe me. Oops. A little grinder. This is a Mako, a one horsepower. A little grinder to get all your BBs off, clean off the mail, mill scale, um, any dirt, debris on the plates. So when you do that bend test, it's gonna come out perfectly. I like to use a die grinder um, to get into any little crevicey spot. So if you have to do a tie-in, you can literally just use this little guy and blend it out real quick. A chipper obviously to get all your slag off and get into the little nooks and crannies both sides I sometimes I sharpen this up a little bit sharpen this side up too so I can just scrape off the BBs but that's I haven't used this for a while so when I go to an interview I'll probably sharpen that up all right and I got whelpers the whelpers are going to help you to get all the birds nests out of the machine out of the feeder and it's not only good for that, it's for good for you to get your tips out, cut your wire, and get your hot nozzle out. I absolutely love these things. I usually keep these on my jeans. That's it for the tools. All right, let's talk safety boots. Do not show up to the job with your steel showing with your met guard falling apart, your laces are all tore up, your slip resistance is pretty much gone. Do not show up with some ratchet, horrible boots because if you do, it's not gonna look good on you. Instead, bring at least decent sized boots. I'm not saying go out and go buy some brand spanking new boots or anything because we all know you just got the job and you're trying to make the money without spending all the money. So, these are the boots I suggest to wear. Timbaland Pro with MetGuard. I had something st uh, dropped on my foot many, many, many years ago. And uh, yeah, ever since then, MetGuard and MetGuard. So, love these boots. Slip resistant, so you don't fall at all. All right. Next is I want to talk about the weld helmet that I've been using for years. As you can tell, I should have cleaned it. Sorry, didn't have time. So um, the weld helmet I like to use is Miller Elite because it has grinding shade. It has welding shade up to 13. It has, um, I believe it's called X mode where you, when you're welding outside, um, this only turns on when you're actually welding not it turn doesn't freak out on you when the sun is hitting it and the thing is is that i like to put a skirt on it yeah it's called a skirt so i like to put a skirt on it so it protects my neck so i don't have that nasty red neck so <laughs> we all know what that one is so the um i like using that one all right and then when you are doing some heavy plate you want to get yourself a leather jacket if you're outside doing stick welding get yourself a leather jacket but if you're doing light gauge I don't have a jacket but it's one of those um, green ones I must have gave it away to somebody it was a green jacket that's light gauge for like MIG or um, TIG so you can use that those are for the green jacket, but the leather jackets are for heavy met, a heavy plate so you don't uh, burn yourself because we all don't need any more burns. And uh, I like to use these Tillman gloves for light gauge. I know they're a little tore up, but there's no holes, so they're still good. They're worn in, they're good gloves. That's for light gauge. But when you get into heavy gauge, which I need to pit, this heat reflector on the glove but I like to use these gloves for heavy gauge so the heat 
reflector is going to protect your knuckle because when you get those nasty blisters when you're right in the middle of a weld you're like i'm not going to stop but the heat is eating your hand alive so you might want to put a reflector on one of your thicker gloves well both your th thicker gloves for the tools that you will be using for construction sites that's only if they don't have an air compressor on site if they don't you would have to get these battery operated tools which are milwaukee grinders i'll put it down in the description box but you pretty much use all the same ppes that i just suggested the leather jacket the gloves this uh the safety glasses the earplugs for sure sunscreen because you're going to be outside not only with the sun and welding with your helmet and oh sorry number one you're gonna need your helmet obviously but um a hard hat too which make sure you wear it this way with the brim out so you don't get any dirt or debris falling on your eyes so once you do that you're good to go and then that's all i suggested so i'm so happy that you got the job ladies and gentlemen or whoever's watching and I'm so happy you got the job. You're gonna blow it out of the water and you're gonna be making tons of money now. So, you got this. All right, thanks for watching.